This conference will now be recorded. I'm just uh, sharing my screen. Uh, today, like as uh, as a part of uh, you know the course content, uh, so we got like uh, you know quite uh, good understanding of how Grafana looks like. Uh, today, I'm going to walking you through uh, how to install and configure Grafana on these uh, three different uh, things. Uh, one is like uh, how to install Grafana on Ubuntu, and at the same time how the Docker image is available. Uh, so to just uh, bring that up, uh, you know, on the web browser and try to see how it looks like. And also we have another uh, uh, mechanism uh, which is called Helm Chats. Uh, so that's we will try to you we try to do these three different approaches in order to bring the Grafana. So to to have this Grafana to be installed, so first of all, like uh, we have to have some prerequisites to be understand. Okay, so uh, the thing is that, uh, uh, so what are the browsers or what are the softwares and what are the operating systems and what are the sort of like databases does Grafana supports? Yes, Grafana supports like all sort of operations. If you can install it on Ubuntu, uh, Debian, or you can install on SUSE, Mac OS, the Windows, uh, it supports. And when it comes to the hardware requirements, okay. So like AppDynamics, uh, Dynatrace, or maybe Neuralic, it doesn't uh, require a huge space uh, in terms of like procuring and hardware. It is enough you just have, you know, the minimum of, uh, you know, the CPU would be one core or two core or whatever it is. Uh, and then with the RAM size of, you know, the 255. So then that's all it starts because uh, uh, basically everything uh, is kind of like uh, the metrics, logs, traces, events, everything will be stored by a backend uh, database, uh, which is like a MySQL, uh, which we will like come to later. Uh, so uh, what's going to happen is that uh, whatever the traces, metrics you have been built on Grafana, all those will be saved into the backend database. So Grafana doesn't store anything. Grafana is sort of like just to, you know, the show, whatever you supply from the Prometheus, will just take that. It will kind of like correlate and display it in a beautiful, uh, you know, the format uh, based on the queries, whatever we write, uh, you know, from Loki using uh, uh, LockQL, or we can write the POM, uh, uh, POQL like uh, Prometheus uh, query language and uh, coming to this the supported browsers yes it supports like you can bring that uh, you know the Grafana console on either the Chrome uh, or you can it can be you know the loading on from the Firefox you can also bring it up on Safari Microsoft Edge and also one 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 good thing about Grafana is that uh, they didn't mention like any particular uh, the limited versions of browsers okay even you can just open it open it up uh, Grafana console on any of you know the browsers uh, so that uh, you can easily view and one one good thing about is that uh, there may be uh, you know uh, certain applications uh, where they can change their view uh, based on that uh, you can switch uh, from one browser to another browser so here this is a static view across all the browsers uh, having said that uh, you can get uh, navigate to each and every future of Grafana against the, uh, any sort of browser, so which you know we we, we spoken about uh, during the first class. And coming to the databases, so uh, of course uh, because all the observability tools in the market are going to support you know the, any sort of database because it's all depends upon the customer requirement. Okay, so you have to have to be very familiar. Uh, with a particular database uh, where uh, 
you know uh, the customer might be having oracle database okay suppose for example you know if you take a toyota motor corporation okay so which i was working earlier for one of the poc so they uh, you know they are having uh, 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 web logic uh, and also they are having like oracle database and they are using sap and they're having some legacy applications uh, where they wanted to uh, measure uh, certain endpoints uh, you know the which are exposing endpoints is nothing but the api this is application uh, you know the programming interface uh, where uh, it exposes the data to the outside world based on you know the queries or the urls uh, which we push on the browser uh, so then uh, there were some limitations uh, for the Toyota application uh, where we have to get into, uh, you know, the, uh, the application box, the application server box uh, to get into that. Uh, that architecture was a very huge architecture. So we have to get into there and it was, it was almost all took like, uh, you know, the week time uh, to understand that. Uh, and then uh, we were able to, you know, get some understanding about uh, how uh, to just, uh, you know, the tune the application using Grafana. So that's all. It's, it's, so it's basically kind of, uh, you know, the, depending upon the architecture where, uh, uh, you know, the, the Grafana or whatever the observability tool, it should be, you know, the database agnostic. So whatever if you pick up mysql yes it is have a plugin to you know the show the database if you're having oracle if you're having a mysql sql server okay so just name this name the database you know the grafana is kind of ready to Hello. Uh, pull can you hear me yeah yeah the thing keeps cutting and you know it cuts for some time and it comes back is that just me or sorry there's a break, you know, sometimes it's a break from you talking, then it come up. Okay. How about now? How about now? I'm not audible. Uh, I'm not audible your voice, Chris. Voice, I am not able to. Chris, I am not I can, able to hear your voice. Uh, oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, sometimes there's a break in communication, right? It breaks and it comes back on alive, live, you know. I'm not sure because uh, that's where, like, whatever the recorded sessions I've just gone through, uh, the voice was very clear. Uh, that's what, like, the uh, yeah. team the, was telling. The voice is yeah. Yeah, the voice is clear, but if you present and write, it cuts, then come back on again. Uh, I'm not sure. How about now? Are you able to see my screen? I can see your screen now. Okay. I was just presenting the same thing uh, some time back and talking about, uh, you know, the Grafana uh, supported browsers and all those details. I hope it is stable now uh, from, uh, you can hear the voice now, right? Uh, let me uh, just stop me uh, wherever if you are feeling any uh, difficulty. Uh, so as a part of this, uh, you know, the course uh, curriculum, uh, so I would be uh, like discussing about this Ubuntu, uh, so which is like one of the Linux architecture. Uh, these are uh, like uh, sort of, uh, you know, the certain steps uh, which we kind of like, uh, you know, need to uh, follow uh, to install uh, Grafana. Uh, so initially, like kind of uh, we have to, uh, you know, the update the package to get a betterment for the uh, Grafana. 
uh, to update with all the features. And the next thing is uh, we have to like uh, Grafana uh, GPG key, uh, which is like uh, comes as a API key uh, where it talks, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, me the metrics, the metrics and everything, the metrics and everything. Okay. And also like uh, we have to like install the packages, uh, which are comes from the Grafana by issuing this command and also like you need to you know the kind of some uh, add some repositories uh, where it will just help in order to uh, you know uh, uh, make grafana stable so once it is done again you have to just update it okay once the relevant packages are updated uh, on the ubuntu or debian now it's the time to you know install this grafana by issuing like apt minus y install grafana uh, once it is done, uh, then, uh, you know, you, you kind of issue this command uh, where you need to uh, bring up uh, the Grafana server. Uh, so once it is, uh, once it is done, uh, okay, so then you have to kind of like enable, enable Grafana server uh, so that, uh, you know, it will start available on the port number 3000 because it is available on the port number 3000. And coming to once whether it is upper, the upper not okay. So that can be you know just uh, checked uh, from from the status uh, Grafana server. So this is like uh, the one one approach you know installing uh, uh, Grafana on Ubuntu uh, system package. Uh, any questions, Chris? I uh, hope you are uh, uh, clear like whatever the instructions I was following up uh, on the document regarding installing the Grafana, right? Please stop me if you have any questions. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, if you present and write, there's a break in transmission then it comes back and be like, this this content is now recorded. You know, this conference is now recorded. No, it is already recording. If you can yeah, see but, it here, right? Yeah, I can see. But if you present it now, it goes off and comes back on again, you know. I'm not sure is the issue with because I was just checking it up uh, from the last two days. Okay, so uh, the screen was like properly appearing. Yeah, maybe after af after today you can you can play the we, we can play back again and, and you see what I'm, what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, about. yes. Sure, sure. After the class, I'll just uh, play the play. The okay. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so there is another another way. Uh, to install Grafana using a Docker image. Uh, okay, so uh, we have come to Docker image in two editions, uh, which I was talking about. Uh, one is like uh, Grafana Enterprise, and another one is like Grafana Open Source, which is like a 15 days to trial version. And there is, uh, so we have to follow like uh, these sort of uh, uh, commands in order to, uh, you know, uh, deploy and configure the Grafana. Uh, so this is available in the Grafana slash, you know, the Grafana enterprise, or we can take it as like a Grafana, uh, or this Grafana slash Grafana OSS, uh, which is of like open source, uh, which is for the 15 days available. Uh, so then uh, if you see like what about each, uh, you know, the, uh, variable, <clears throat> Uh, where component of this Grafana talk. So run is nothing but uh, basically it will uh, load, you know, the Grafana image uh, on Ubuntu or whatever the Linux packaging system you are using it. The minus T is nothing but there are the two ways. One is the attached and the detached mode. Suppose if you add this D, right, what happens is like it will save the time. <clears throat> 
so that it will run faster in a detached mode so that you no need to see all the list of uh, commands are being run and what are the port number you wanted to load it up okay as i said earlier it is like you know the default port number uh, would be 3000 okay you can also change it to like 3001 or whatever it is and what is the image you are kind of like you know the container image so this is something is like the container image the grafana slash grafana oss uh, so it is available so once it is uh, once you are issued this one then it will just uh, you know the start uh, loading it up so once <clears throat> it is available uh, then you have to like stop uh, the container uh, that can be you know the run by like the docker stop container so this is the one approach and another one uh, using uh, uh, you know uh, using uh, helm charts okay so this is the another way to do this i'll just share these notes uh, after the session uh, so that uh, you guys also kind of like uh, play around to see uh, to get a good answer on it Okay. Uh, so this is the uh, like uh, method, uh, third method, uh, where you can just uh, add using the Helm repos. Helm charts are nothing but they're already built-in templates. You just have to pass, you know, the variable whichever you wanted to load it up either from a Fuse, Loki, or Grafana. Uh, so to do that one, uh, you need to add Helm repo add. This command need to be added. Uh, so that this is uh, uh, this is the like the charts where it has all the details support for the Loki, and for coming to this Helm repo adds table, uh, you can you can kind of steps uh, this table so that we have like all the details about uh, you know the Prometheus uh, available under this uh, package. So once you have this, okay, you need to extract the Prometheus uh, from this table, the Prometheus operator. Uh, so that under the monitoring the namespace so then it will just you know the start uh, deploying it so once you have that uh, you can see like these number of uh, you know the parts will be available uh, one is like the node exporter as i said that uh, this is the node exporter where it is kind of like an agent uh, which will like uh, pull the metrics uh, sitting on the particular agent cluster container node pod uh, whatever you call it okay so it will just pull those metrics and send it to uh, grafana uh, so that you can see it on grafana console that is the one thing and uh, the other one is like the grafana uh, you can see like the second line this uh, grafana so this grafana is kind of like uh, similar to this what we have talked about these different uh, things uh, so on the kubernetes cluster uh, if you just wanted to load it again here it will also take the 3000 and basically this offer operator okay so this is the main uh, part uh, where it will you know try to communicate uh, from uh, from the server or from the cluster cluster node to the grafana where it will try to you know do the transporter job of uh, exporting the metrics uh, from node to the grafana and node exporter is nothing but this is an agent sitting on the node to to pull the metrics and export the metrics so that is the difference between the node exporter and the upper and operator and this is an alert manager you can see like alert manager so this alert manager uh, is a, is like an another agent uh, where it helps in order to uh, you know the pull the alerts and send out the notification based on uh, you know the anomalies found uh, on the server let it be cpu utilization got maxed out or maybe uh, yeah let me log yeah. out and log back in and see okay sure i'll be waiting yeah.
Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, can you hear me now? I, I can hear you. Yeah, okay, sure. I'm just sharing this. Uh, yeah, as I was as I was explaining, uh, like uh, so, the purpose of node exporter is to just pull the matrix and send it to the Grafana, and the upper operator is acts as like uh, you know the uh, communicator uh, where it will send uh, the matrix to the Grafana, and the uh, alert manager uh, is the another part uh, which will plays the major role in order to uh, you know, uh, send a notification that is the one, and there are the cube state metrics. So, this will help in order to get the you know the Kubernetes metrics uh, to be uh, you know, uh, pulled it and send it to this. So, this is uh, like the service monitor uh, which we have to use in order to scape the metrics to that. And which I was telling about these, uh, you know, the you need to. Uh, <clears throat> create a sample hello world uh, application then after that once you have a part uh, because the parts are kind of like an internal uh, internal systems where they cannot be you know the accessed outside so to do that one you have to expose uh, prometheus and grafana ips so to do that one uh, you just need to pick that uh, particular part and just go there and run the kubectl expose part uh, under the monitoring namespace and which port number you wanted to do that you can just do by you know the uh, double hash port 80 and the target port 9090 and the type should be load balancer so that's where it can kind of like distribute the load uh, from the different uh, you know the node exporter to grafana and another one is like you have to expose uh, grafana uh, so that is to be again uh, same thing uh, you need to do like the port number 3000 so once it is done uh, you can see like uh, the ip addresses uh, which are like available uh, for this one and this operator so then once you have that you can just run that uh, url uh, so that it will just start uh, you know the loading it up and at the same time grafana and the rest all it is the same uh, so you can see like uh, uh, the applications uh, metrics, you know, the start discovering, they will do auto discovery and whatever like, uh, you know, the metrics, uh, the components are sitting on the cluster, all those uh, gonna, you know, the appear like alert manager, uh, the Grafana, cube control, cube headset, proxy scheduler, kubelet, node exporter, and Prometheus operator and Prometheus. And this is about the application uh, details. And uh, you, you have to run some sort of, uh, you know, the queries uh, to get uh, the metrics out of that. So this, this will be some sample metrics queries where you can get CPU, memory, and all those details and application server details. Once you have that, you can just, uh, we will be gonna build a similar, you know, the dashboard for CPU and uh, for the memory and at the same time what are the others it is coming up and also about how the response time uh, looks like uh, for particular application parts once it is done now it's a time to you know the pull the locks so again that can be done by using uh, another uh, chart uh, which is kind of like you need to just loki slash loki start under the monitoring once you do that uh, so then it will start showing uh, these are like the different parts uh, you can see like there are totally uh, two parts are running along with uh, two agents as I said the prompt tail if you don't have any prompt tail uh, you know the available on particular server uh, it is kind of like very tough you know to expose the logs to Grafana so that's where like this prompt tail acts as a backend uh, backbone uh, where it can expose uh, you know, the logs uh, to the um, Grafana. And these are the services uh, because you have to expose the service uh, 
uh, then only it will try to uh, talk uh, to the graphic. Once you have that, you need to add the uh, add the data source uh, because this uh, Loki is available under the 3100 uh, port number. Once you have that, it, it, you will get a uh, green button saying that. And then this is the uh, you know uh, the process, uh, the method which we have to follow in order to see uh, the Loki methods. Uh, the data it is coming up so once you issue the application once you issue the query uh, by using app equal to hello world spring boot you know you're gonna kind of uh, getting all these details like uh, when the uh, first event log event record all those details you're going to get because uh, this is uh, this is like a uh, uh, open source right uh, where we are not uh, buying anything so what happens is like initially you'll be getting like uh, 10k metrics okay uh, you'll be getting 10k metrics and at the same time you can able to ingest the logs for 50 gb because sometimes like uh, one log line uh, is having like maybe 1 mb or 2 mb or whatever it is uh, you know uh, and you can also like do this uh, 50 GB traces and at the same time you can do the testing for the 500 users. So this is uh, this is about like you know the uh, points uh, or the prerequisites uh, which we have to follow. So let me uh, create uh, one VM. I am creating the one virtual machine uh, with this uh, below reference. I will be taking this Ubuntu and I will take like uh, 255 MB and one this one. And also uh, nowadays like this uh, Google Cloud or Microsoft uh, Azure, uh, they are providing uh, you know the free services. Uh, Azure will provide like one month. Uh, and whereas the Google Cloud, they will provide like uh, three months uh, subscription uh, where uh, you can use that and, uh, you know, to, to, to play around uh, with the systems. Uh, so I would suggest uh, better go for the Google Cloud uh, where we can get uh, three months subscri uh, subscription. Uh, with that uh, three months subscription, uh, you can uh, you can get, uh, you know, the Grafana can be played around. So... Uh, let me open up this. I have just already used it, uh, you know, the, for uh, <clears throat> for app dynamics. Of course, it is having like uh, the relevant uh, configuration, enough configuration. Okay, you can see that. Um, uh, okay, so here this is like uh, two VCPs and eight GB memory. It is running on it. And coming to the operating system, uh, it is having like Ubuntu running on it. I should see somewhere. Hmm. Operating system Linux one Linux Ubuntu. Yeah, you can see like this is an Ubuntu. Uh, right now the version is running on like uh, twenty point four. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, now let me print this. <coughs> so you have to generate uh, some private key. Uh, otherwise, uh, there are multiple ways. Uh, one is that uh, you can connect through from the cloud shell. Uh, so, which will be like a little congesting, uh, so to play around, uh, you know, the commands. Otherwise, uh, other option is that uh, what you can do, you can just kind of like uh, uh, generate a private key uh, with, with using the putty chain. Uh, okay, so then uh, uh, you can go to here uh, under this uh, passwords. Okay, so there will be one option called passwords. 
Yeah, I've already done that. Okay. Okay, you need to load this, uh, this one. Once it is done, uh, you have to take uh, <coughs> IP address. So this is the IP address. Uh, you just kind of like enter here. Okay, so here it, it is authenticated here. Uh, so this is the command you have to follow. Uh, I need to uh, like uh, update the package. Permission denied. Sudo app update. <clears throat> so what happens is like uh, it will try to update uh, the system. It is similar to our uh, uh, personal desktop. Uh, whatever the update it's come so that it should compatible with the uh, current uh, uh, features of any application. So the same way we have to update the package. Okay, so once uh, once you do the package update, uh, what what we have to follow the next command is so you need to install this. I'll just go to you need to clear the screen. Uh, you need to clear the screen. Uh, then uh, because this is a normal user, uh, you need to issue this command. Uh, this so that it will try to download all the packages okay. after that uh, you need to run this okay so it is received the confirmation we got it as okay and after that uh, you know you need to update the packages pertain to grafana again you need to use sudo add repository okay so once it is done uh, now you need to just uh, apt update <coughs> sorry you have to use sudo Okay, now what we have done so far, like uh, we are trying to uh, install all the dependent uh, packages, uh, dependent uh, packages. Okay, so now it's the time to install uh, the Grafana. So, what we have to do is that uh, sudo apt minus y install Grafana. So, it is all the small letters. Not sure, I think it seems to be some cache lock. It is trying to kill that, but it uh, didn't supposed to be. Not sure.
Hey Chris, you have any queries? Hmm? Now, is that it for today? No, oh, no, no, no. I'm just, uh, I've just only covered the first uh, one. Okay. Okay. We'll that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions uh, so far, Chris, uh, regarding these requirements, uh, prerequisites? No. So on the job, right? So the mostly the job they will use like en enterprise, right? Do they have to download Grafana or? No, no, Grafana voices, not enterprise, because enterprise like it's a uh, uh, this this is enough for us, okay? Grafana cloud uh, this because. You'll get like 10k metrics, 50 GB log. This is fine for us, for just for practice. Okay, once in a real time, once you are working for a particular customer, right? So what they gonna do? They just gonna buy it on the enterprise version. Right now, which uh, we don't need it for that. We just fine with uh, this one, open source. This is fine. Hello? You just yeah, just check. yeah, just clear that. Sometimes it will take uh, you know to clear the cache, so that's why it took almost on 132 seconds. So now it is installing the 9.5 version because what happened is that um, on the virtual machines, on the physical machines, right? So this Grafana. This Grafana team hasn't upgraded actually because nowadays, uh, nowadays uh, we could uh, we could see that uh, all the Grafana using on the cluster and the Kubernetes, so they are having the latest version. But anyway, this is also not a very old one, but this is kind of like the ninth version. Okay, so now it is uh, deployed. So to check this one, uh, you need to system CTL status grafana okay now the server is available uh, uh, now I need to start uh, check the service. Oh, it is inactive. Okay, I need to start. Yeah. Uh, now it is uh, running. Now let me go to the particular server. Uh, let me see what is an IP address. Okay, I'll just take this IP address and just go here. Uh, because this uh, Grafana is running on the 3000 port number. Otherwise, uh, it seems to be there is having some network issues. Okay, it is not reachable because the port number is not allowing. So we need to enable the firewall. Okay, so to do that, uh, just go here. And, uh, there should be some firewall. Control. Uh, yeah, let's 
Uh, so here uh, we have to just enable. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'll just create uh, one inbound profile. Uh, just to say that what is the port number? It is kind of like 3000, and I'm just saying hello. And, uh, the name should be. This is for uh, Grafana. So this is like an inbound uh, one, uh, then I need to just uh, do the same outbound also, so that it will uh, send the traffic outside. Grafana outbound port. Okay, so now right, now, right now the uh, firewall has been opened. Uh, so now let me see. So this is up and uh, let me duplicate session. Login found. Yeah, see. Uh, now we got this one. Okay. Uh, so this is the way, like, uh, you know, right now it is working on Ubuntu. Uh, and this will be default admin admin. So you need to log in with the admin admin and then you can just uh, see that uh, Kafana you know, admin 123 and just make it uh, admin 123 and here also admin 123. So this is the uh, Grafana one. Uh, it should be again the similar. You will be having all the features and everything. Uh, so this is the one way of like uh, onboarding uh, Grafana. So any doubts, Chris? So far, I hope uh, you are clear, right? Any doubts? Okay. Uh, so now let me take to the uh, Docker image. Okay. Uh, so, uh, right now, uh, let us assume that I'll just stop the service. Okay, so to do that, uh, just sudo uh, stop uh, no, sudo systemctl stop Grafana server. So that the service will be stopped. Systemctl Status Grafana server. Okay, so right now, like the service is stopped, and also you can also validate, see whether if it is up and running. Yeah, it is stopped. So now let us, uh, you know, the, look into how we can just run it in uh, Docker. Let me see like whether we are having a Docker or not. Docker okay, so we don't have any Docker. Uh, so we will have to install Docker. Oh, sorry. It is So, Docker.
So now uh, we will just see like Dr. Run, uh, Dr. Nates PS. So, Dr. Nates PS. So right now we don't have anything. So what I will do, I'll just send uh, Dr. Suro Dr. login. I'll try to log into my Docker Hub. Okay, fine, no issues. Uh, we see that uh, Docker, uh, to just check whether the images, any container images are running, you just need to issue sudo docker images ES. So it will see. Uh, you don't have anything right now. Uh, so either you can do sudo su minus so that you do space docker images ES. You can see Docker W. Who am I? Okay. Clear. So now uh, we'll just see, like, uh, okay, so we are able to uh, go on this one. Uh, right now, what I will do, I will just uh, try to see if I can connect again to Docker. Okay. So now here, uh, Docker. Ls, LS, LSRPS, whatever you want, you can just uh, do that. So right now, what I will do, uh, just to pull the images, right? What you can do, you can just uh, Docker pull. Uh, Docker pull, you need to pull the image. So it, will just, uh, like, it will just try to pull the image. So before installing, you need to pull the image so that it will be on your local repository. Okay. So once you have done, now you can see like Docker image. Okay. So now what you have to do, uh, now I would like to run this one. I'll just issue this command. Uh, okay. Uh, so if you can look at here, I'm just running Docker. Docker run minus t minus t so that it will be the name equal to Grafana. Just click uh, Docker images. Docker. running So what I will do, I'll, I'll just uh, go to here. Here. And again, it's uh, this is the public IP. See. Uh, now you can easily get it. So I've installed uh, Docker. Earlier it was like a bare metal. Uh, where I used it as uh, 
uh, on the well, physical machine. Right now, it is kind of like a lightweight component because it is an image uh, where you can see that uh, where you can see uh, you know the uh, the space and everything will be a bit uh, you know the less compared to the bare metal uh, of the OS. So again, admin, admin, uh, again, admin, one, two, three, admin, one, two, three. So once you have here, again, it's again the same, the profile, and then you can see the sign out. So this is kind of like a little lesser version. Uh, it seems to be it is having a version 9.5. Uh, yeah, that's all uh, for today. Uh, so we're gonna like look into this uh, another one, the Helm charts, uh, so which will be useful for you tomorrow.